giant sequoias naturally are only found in the Sierra Nevada of California, and in fact, just the western slope of the Sierra Nevada, where it's wet enough for them. I have often wondered if a sequoia could speak, what stories it would tell, because they've stood there for so long. They've seen generations of Native Americans walk by underneath them, and just in the last blink of an eye, it's people from all over the world have started walking underneath them. Giant sequoias are the biggest tree on Earth. They could be 100 feet around, 30 feet across, upwards of 300 feet tall. When you walk through the forest and you see a big tree, you're like, oh, that's a big tree. But when you walk through the forest and there's giant sequoias, it is, there's nothing like it. Like that tree is so much bigger than everything else. And you're just dwarfed by it. It's incredible when you stand at one of the base of these trees and look up and just marvel at the fact that it's been growing in this spot for one or two or even 3,000 years. The change that it's seen over its lifetime and the conditions that it's seen and its ability to just grow to be these massive, uh, incredible organisms. Giant sequoias are incredibly resilient trees. They don't get to be 3,000 years old without having some strategies for survival and some built-in resilience. So they're very resistant to fire. They have tannins and other chemicals in their bark and wood that make them kind of unpalatable to a lot of pests. They are really pest and pathogen resistant. They can deal with fires, they can deal with droughts. They're really tough and resilient trees, but you know, with changing climate, temperatures are getting warmer and droughts are becoming more severe, hotter and drier, sucking more water out of these trees and the soil, the rest of the landscape. This environment gets droughts all the time. It always has, it always will. And there's two sides to every drought. There's what I call the supply side, and that's the precipitation. That's your rain and your snowfall. We usually think of a drought as low supply, but there's also a demand side, and that's the warmer the atmosphere gets, the more water it's pulling out of the trees. After that last major drought from 2012 to 2016, we started to observe some unusual levels of giant sequoia mortality. So we've been looking at them since that drought and trying to understand what's causing them to die. A lot of their vulnerability to drought just has to do with how much water they need. A mature giant sequoia tree can use a thousand gallons of water in a single day. Conventional wisdom is that giant sequoia roots are very shallow, but it seems like there's not enough water in the soil. So we think that their roots might go deeper. Some of these new threats that seem to be emerging to giant sequoias, we need new information. We need to know more than ever before things like, where do sequoias get their water? And some of that can really only be answered by climbing the trees. Climbing a giant sequoia is a bit of a process. We use a crossbow with fishing line attached. We shoot fiberglass rods up over a big sturdy branch. And then we can pull our climbing rope in and climb up the rope. And then once we establish our rigging in the trees, we can come back and continue to sample the trees by just pulling our ropes in. So what we're doing is collecting samples before, during, and after prescribed fire to get an understanding of how fire affects their water dynamics. We have suppressed fire in giant sequoia forests for a very long time. We didn't understand that fire is really important for the health of giant sequoia forests. Giant sequoias need fire. They require fire for the successful germination. It clears out the understory, creates a nice mineral seedbed for the seedlings to get established and grow. But they need a nice kind of frequent low severity fire for the health of these forests and the trees. Fire is changing because of climate change. The fires of today are hotter and burning in conditions that are drier than they were even 10, 
15 years ago. What we're finding so far looks like a combination of really severe drought, recent damage from fire, either wildfire or prescribed fire, made the trees really vulnerable to a beetle attack, which they are normally able to fight off. This western cedar bark beetle, which is endemic to the forest here, what we're seeing now is that under certain kind of novel conditions of really severe, hotter drought and fire damage, that the trees are weakened enough that they can't fight off those, these beetles anymore. While these beetles are native to these forests and have been able to make use of giant sequoia branches that fall to the ground, we're now seeing that they are able to attack living trees, which is a new development and concerning. What we thought we knew about giant sequoias and the resilience to fire and the resilience to drought, we were very wrong about because the conditions around them have changed so rapidly that these trees just can't adapt to it. In the past two years alone, nearly 20% of the entire adult giant sequoia population has died in high severity fire. They're stressed now. We know they're going to be more stressed into the future. Could we survive as humans without giant sequoias? Probably. But would you want to? I mean, there's just something so special about these trees that I think touches any person who comes to visit them. I have grandchildren. I think of what are my grandchildren going to see here? What are their grandchildren going to see here? What is the future of sequoias in the face of a warming climate? The things we can do are the things we've known we need to do, and that's to reduce the fuels around these big trees either with prescribed fire, or in some cases by removing the smaller trees, such as white fir, that crowd the giant sequoias. Thanks to the support from Yosemite Conservancy donors, we're reducing the threat of high severity fire in the Merced Grove, and we're continuing to study the effects of drought, fire, and bark beetles in the Mariposa Grove. The fate of these trees, to a large degree, is in our hands as human beings, and the choices we make they benefit from our actions if we're careful and we protect them. And they give back to us these feelings that we can't get anywhere else. I still get goosebumps when I come up here and walk amongst the sequoias, and I've been working in them for well over 40 years. They take my breath away.